beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Trisha Penn Jackson. I'm a licensed real estate agent in New York City and I also write a fashion lifestyle blog called FeastedFashion.com. Here on my channel, we talk about fashion, we talk about lifestyle, we talk about travel, and we sprinkle in a little bit of real estate. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button to become a member of our tribe. Please hit that notification button to know when these videos drop and please give this video a huge thumbs up to tell YouTube that you liked it. The time has finally come that I am sharing my 2024 wish list, my luxury wish list. Um, I do this actually on the quarters, really. I mean, at the um, in the half years. So beginning of the year, and then the second half of the year for like fall, winter stuff. Right now, we're in the middle of uh, the fashion week. New York Fashion Week just happened. London Fashion Week, Milan, and now we are about to head into Paris Fashion Week. So those fall um looks are just coming out down the runway so i'll cover what's on the wish list from them a little later on in the year but right now this video is going to cover some of the things that came down the spring summer 2024 runway or even things that have just been around that i have on my wish list or just newly discovered or newly remembered that i liked and all that stuff and i love to do these videos and share them with you guys one to give you inspo for your own um your own wish list if you are interested in you know just creating this aspirational list of things that you would like to get it also keeps me a little organized so that when i am doing my luxury purchases that i'm not going crazy and i kind of can just stick to the things that i know i really really want uh takes a, i go through a lot of different sites i go through a lot of my pinterest boards and stuff like that and just pick out different things that i feel like would resonate toward for me in my wardrobe and in my lifestyle so that is what i'm going to go through with you guys today and um of course i will link what i can link in the description below in case you are interested in purchasing for yourself all right let's jump right in so the first i um, i sectioned it off in categories i just feel like it's easier to do that that way you know um call it my type a personality but i love a category and the first category i'm, I'm going to speak about is actually jewelry and there are a couple of things that I'm super interested in adding to my jewelry collection. One of the things I want to say about jewelry is that, um, you know, I, most of my jewelry is costume jewelry. Even these, these are Louis Vuitton and they're costume jewelry. So um, I'm definitely have gone, um, you know, definitely not into the fine jewelry department just yet. And I say just yet because, you know, you never know how, how things can pan out. But um, I do want to add some more, so not some more, or a couple of pieces that are can, can, be, can be considered fine jewelry. And um, the first of that uh, would be something from Tiffany's. So in my um, Christmas wish list, I put that I would love to get a Tiffany's tea ring. And that is still on my uh, wish list. I think it would be just really cute. And my name is Trisha, tea ring. Just works perfectly but I also think that it would be really nice to invest in a Tiffany's cuff or bracelet and of course you know everybody is very um, knows a lot about that Tiffany um, Elsa Peretti cuff that is super super popular the silver one is I think the most recognizable one because I think it's one of the most affordable too. Um, so that may be, um, but I'm not really a silver girl. So I was thinking about this, this the Tiffany's lock bangle. And it just, when it came out, I think it's only been out for a, two, about two years it came out. Um, it's all, It's been on my wish list. It's been on like one of those things in the back of my mind is like, that would be a Thomas piece. It would be very classic. And it it just ha so happens to be pretty pricey, especially if you add like a dime or two um, with it because they do come in like different metals. I would love a mixed metal one. So a gold and a silver one. A diamond or two would be amazing, but again, would cost quite a bit more <laughs> to add that to the list but I just feel like having that bracelet would be really really cool this is this would be a really cool 
it's like an updated like Cartier lock bracelet. Even though Cartier lock bracelets I think are still cute and I still think they're classic even though people think that they're played out. Um, I think this is like a really upgraded version of that and this one to me gives every day. Like I have a Hermes bracelet, again another costume jewelry piece and I, they're costume jewelry because they're not made of like real silver or real gold. This is. So um, this these pieces are a little bit more precious, but they're great still for every day. It's something that you can uh, put on and your cost per wear would definitely go down. And it's actually something you could pass on to the next generation too. And that's something too to, you know, to definitely think about when you're investing in these kind of things, especially when they're over $5,000. <laughs> okay, so the next um, item in my jewelry category is actually also another wrist accessory, but it's in a, it's a costume jewelry piece. And it's this J bracelet from Jacquemus. You guys know I love Jacquemus jewelry. I have two pairs of their earrings. I just want to have a couple pairs of, I mean, a couple items from their clothing line. And I just love Jacquemus. What Jacquemus is doing right now is amazing. There's so many pieces in this spring, summer uh, 2020 collection that I'm obsessed with and a few that are on this list. So you'll see. Um, and this J bracelet is one of them. I just think it's super, super cute. It's again, uh, bracelets are something that are super popular right now. I'm not huge, huge into bracelets. Like I'm not, you probably won't see me wearing a stack because that's just not my style, but you definitely would see me wearing like one over here and maybe a watch on uh, my other hand. And I just think that this bracelet will be super cute and it's, a, it's just sort of like a really great statement. I can see it wearing, me wearing it over long sleeves like this and then in the summertime, you know, with a bare, bare wrist, I just think it's super cute. And the J on the side, just just fabulous. So and that is why that is on my list. I think it would be really, really fun. The next item is actually a vintage moment. I feel like last year when I did my wish list, I had a Rolex on my list. And it's still on my list and in the back of my mind. I'm going to get me a Rolex one day. But I actually saw more recently this Card vintage Cartier watch. And I think I mentioned it before in um, a previous um, a previous wishlist video but I'm just like obsessed with them now I think that they're so dainty and demure and again that everyday piece that you could just pop on and it's not like I'm not a quiet luxury kind of girl by no means like you guys know like I love loud colors crazy even though today I'm very New York and all black um, but I just think a chic watch like watches to me I just feel like they need to be chic um, I usually wear like an Apple watch or something like that and I have like a small little dainty watch I, back in the day I had one of those Marco Kors watches but it would be really cool to kind of have like one of those investment pieces especially walking around with clients like there are things that you pay attention to things that you notice when you are walking around and being chic in New York City so I think that little Cartier watch would definitely fit in my style. It's something again that I could wear every day that would not um, clash with a lot of things. Of course, I would get like a gold bezel because I just think that a gold and silver, they have gold and silver bezels too. So it just really depends um, on what I find vintage wise because that's what, that's how I want to get them. I don't want to buy a new one. I want to get something vintage um, that, you know, it's a little bit more worn and a little bit more, you know, if you know, you know. <laughs> all right so the next item on my list is something from a dream brand of mine and it's honestly because I want one of their pieces and like I could I could get any of the pieces and be happy with it and that brand is Scaparelli I really 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 want a pair of Scaparelli earrings and I say the earrings in particular because one I'm an earring girl I do have a I do have necklaces I have a good collection of necklaces but that's not what I gravitate towards more I gravitate towards earrings and I think just like a fun surrealist you know crazy statement piece like Scaparelli earring would just be perfect in my wardrobe because I'm already that girl. I'm already gonna wear these statement earrings. I'm already gonna wear these fun big, you know, hoops and or like they have this surrealist eye um, earring. There's a keyhole one. There's just so many designs that I don't 
like honestly I just want one <laughs> there's a few of them and I could pick any one of them and I think all of them would go with my wardrobe I think all of them would fit in with my style and fit with my aesthetic like every single one would so I'm gonna link some of my favorites in the the description they they don't sell online unless they're like Re are you're um getting them on a resale shop but um they're just for you guys to see i'm gonna, i'm popping up pictures of them here i should be uh but yeah that's on my list so i just really want this got really piece it's just something that's been on my mind and just with um daniel rosenberg uh, rosenberg um daniel roseberry just recently he's just his things are just so great and i just love it so much all right, and then the last piece um, in like the jewelry category is also another costume jewelry piece, but it's another dream brand of mine to have a piece from, and that is McQueen. I love Alexander McQueen so much. Um, just a couple of months ago, I think it was in December actually, I went to uh, the um, Alexander McQueen sample sale, but it was on the last day of the sample sale, so there wasn't a lot left in, you know, I'm the type of person that I'm not that thirsty to be buying stuff that, well, not anymore. <laughs> you guys, I, I learned my lesson from the Dion Lee um, sweater that I got. But most of the time when I go to sample sales, I'm not like, oh, I need to have something from this brand just to have it. Like I, I'd rather just save my money and save up for something off in retail. And this is one of them that it's the modernist. I mean, yeah, modernist earring uh from mcqueen again it's like a big twisted kind of it almost looks like a chain link a little bit but like a twisted avant-garde kind of chain link earring and i'm obsessed with it i think it's so cute again i love a statement earring and i think it would fit perfectly in my wardrobe it's something again that i would be able to interchange with my earrings like this my uh bottega dupes I just think it would be a really fun earring. It comes in silver and in gold, and I think there's different sizes, but I would like the bigger one. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get a McQueen earring that's tiny and small. That's just not my thing. <laughs> it's just not gonna. Be, I'm not that girl. All right. So the next category, which is actually something just like, not. I'm not really into them as much as like a lot of people are. There are some people who would love it. my sister being one of them. Sunglasses um i'm just not i have a few pair of like 10 pairs and i'm good with that they you know i need a brown pair a black pair a white pair you know a couple colors and that's it i'm not really huge into sunglasses but there are a few that caught my eye that i am like i could add these to my collection the first being actually from louis vuitton's men's collection i told you guys that pharrell is doing his thing at louis vuitton and i am here for it and even though the prices are astronomical for all the other things because there's some piece like tops and pants and everything that i would wear from that collection uh the accessories are semi-affordable i say semi because 900 dollars for a pair of sunglasses doesn't seem practical but you know it is what it is and those glasses are the cyclone pearl and um pearl and stars sun sunglasses and they are just cute this style is actually not new it's a it's a style that louis vuitton does for their men's collection they've come in different variations uh but just the pearls and the i don't know crystals on the side it's just so fabulous. I love a fabulous pair of um, sunglasses. Again, I'm not necessarily a sunglass girl, but if it's bright and sparkly and cute and out there, I'm here for it. And these sunglasses definitely fit that bit bill. And I love, I've tried these, um, the style on before, so I know how these sunglasses fit on me. And they are just the chicest, the chicest kind of sunglasses, the way they sit. And then the fact that the lenses are so opaque, they just give like boss, I'm the boss bitch. Like, honestly, that's, that's the aesthetic. Well, they're made for men, but when ladies wear them, they can be, they can be that. But love 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 these glasses so much so they are definitely gonna be on the list um obviously something that is a little bit more attainable on the list are these sunglasses the next one 
is um, from Loewe. I have two pairs of Loewe sunglasses. I don't see me stopping from getting their their stuff. They make a sun, pair of sunglasses or multiple pairs of sunglasses that I always want to buy because it's just so good. Like I just think that that's something that um, they're really, really good at. And this season they have the Loewe cat eye double frame um, sunglasses. Oh, and they are just obnoxious and chic and out there and just as fly as they want to be and I am here for it again something that's not subtle something that's in your face but still very chic love 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 them they come in tons of different colors I am really liking oxblood I already told you guys this um, uh, before that this was a color for the season it's actually even like if you've been checking out the runways and um the fashion shows and you definitely going to be for fall as well i'll have actually new york fashion week coverage coming up soon of all the shows and then i'll do milan and um london and then we'll end out in with a video about paris fashion week so that you guys have a compilation of some of the runways and we can kind of swap trends and stuff together beforehand but i digress um this oxblood color one is just so cute but they definitely come in other colors i think i've seen like a um like an olive green, there is of course black, and um, some other colors, but love, love, love them. Uh, we'll link them in the description. And of course, of, of the things on this list, they are probably, they are probably the most affordable thing on the list at like $400. Um, again, this is a wish list. This is not like, I'm necessarily gonna get every single thing, which would, it would be amazing if I did. Um, but it's very aspirational. All right, the next category is my favorite category, and you guys know it because you know I'm a shoe girl, and that are, is shoes. The first on my list is also from the dream brand that I spoke about before, Schiaparelli, and these keyhole pumps. I am obsessed with them. I, these are actually, I don't think that these are 20, or spring, I think these are from last season, but um, Schiaparelli, they still sell their things, um, even after the season is over because again they're just like hot like they're they're ultra luxury and they're also very selective in certain things so um things will come back and things will be in stock still even if it's not in that season and these keyhole i've seen them in store because i've seen them at bergdorf and they are still there and i love them and as far as getting a ski apparelli piece they are fairly affordable at like twelve hundred dollars so not bad. I mean, I have shoes that are twice as much in here. So definitely not bad. I want to add them into my collection because I just feel like they're a classic pump, but with a twist. I love, I love things that are, can be like, kind kind can kind of be an everyday thing, but like with the, like something. I tell you guys about this all the time. Like that's really like, how, like how I want to dress, how I want to be. It's like your blazer, but like with something dramatic about happening about it like that's that i'm that kind of girl so these shoes of course classic black pump in suede but with a keyhole um in gold on it so love 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 all right next item is from jacquemus i told you guys that jacquemus has quite a few items right now that i'm like e i need to add i need to add i need to add to cart add to cart and this double heel like okay so first when they um they kind of teased the double heel before their show everybody was like what is that that looks crazy blah 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 and now it, well when i saw them i was like that is so dope like that is so like so the Jack and Lewis's, um creative director is just, I can't remember what his name is right now. French guy, I can, cannot remember. But anyway, he is just, his mind is just so crazy. And it's funny because he's, he's still, he, him and I are the same age. He's still pretty young, like to be doing the things that he's doing and um, thinking outside the box like he thinks. I just, I love, love, love it. And um, these heels I think are so cute and so dope. They come in a, a variety of color, but I would just get the black and the white one because it's like one heel's black, one heel's white, and I just think that would be perfect. My wardrobe, it can fit, it can go with multiple colors. It's anything when you do a monochromatic mix like that, black and white, goes with everything. Um, and I just love them so much. And I also think that having them in black and white, it makes them a little bit more subtle 
because the fact that there are two heels stacked on it, it's already the quirky thing. You don't need to have quirky, they come in quirky colors too. You only need to have, add the quirky colors too. I just feel like that's going a little bit over the top. So yes, these heels in black and white, they are on my list and I love them so much. I think they would be so cute. All right, and the next one are, at, the next pair of shoes are actually also from Jack Moose. <laughs> I told you. They just, they have my heart right now. And it's the Hong Carré heels or uh, flats. They come in a variety of flats. So basically it's a pointed heel and it has like an emblem in whatever fabric the shoe is made out of. One side is a round and one side is a square, which is Hong Carré. Carré is square, Hong is a um, circle. And that's Jack and Moose's thing. They do one round, one round, one square, and a lot of different things. And I just think that there's that's so cheeky and so cute. And these are another pair of shoes that are more practical for my everyday. Like I will wear these to work. These will be my like workhorse shoes. I, I really want them in two different colors. One, they have a denim, a denim flat with like a sling back, and I love what that looks like. I think it would be super, super cute. And then there's an animal print color with, um, the, which comes in a flat, like a regular flat, kind of almost ballet flat. But then there is a baby heel one and then a little bit bigger heel one, which is not, it's not crazy. It's not a crazy heel. I want the baby heel one because even though I love uh, flat shoes, I also have flat feet. So it doesn't like, I always like to have like a little bit of heel, a little bit of, or a little bit of elevation in my, my feet because my whole foot would just be on the ground when I wear flat shoes. And they usually are, um, unless they're sneakers. So I love like a little heel and I think a baby heel just also makes, um, it, people used to hate on kitten heels so much. And now look at us, look at us, you, us millennials, mid and late and even early millennials. We used to talk so much crap about a kitten heel and look at us. Wearing hip, um, kitten heels all over. Crazy. But no. Um, I love kitten heel. So those shoes would be amazing. All right. So the next category. This is where my wardrobe lacks. Um, it, it, it lacks almost like the most. And that is in the bag, the bag section. I have a couple of you know, I have a couple of designer bags, but I have a little a little bit more like pop around crazy unique bags. And then a lot of summer bags too. I got when I went to Bali, I got all of these like Bali like beachy bags. Like where am I gonna wear all these bags? They were cute at the time and they were super cheap, but like where am I wearing these? I really need to get more and want to add more practical pieces and practical bags to my collection where I can actually switch out and have um bags that go with like my looks and stuff. So the first on my list, I actually already mentioned this before in my Christmas list. I did not get it for Christmas, but I think uh, this year I have quite a few trips and big events and stuff that is going on. So I'm really trying to be budget conscious of that. But again, a girl like got to get something for herself. She got to think about herself. So it just depends on like um, what I close next month. And I might just crop one of these uh, because I think it's just it would be like a nice little Yay, you clothes present. Um, so it's either the Louis Vuitton Alma bag. I already told you guys I love that bag in the Verni, which is the um, patent leather and a plum color. When I was younger, that bag came out when I was like in my late teens, early 20s, I think. And um, well, the iteration of it, I should say. And everybody had it and I love that bag and that color always just stuck with me again it's like an ox blood e kind of color and I just I just love it I think it would be such a great like everyday kind of bag for me um, the next one would also be a um, Louis Vuitton speedy bag so I am on the fence on colors for speedies because um, I love a red bag. I would love to get another red bag. I do have one that I have from like this Japanese brand that I wear, but I just think like a red speedy with the LV logos in it. Chef's kiss. The Epsom one also has my eye. Like I like a like a little bit more subdued uh, one, but the LV, the embossed LVs also are just super super cute. And then I love the green. There's a green. You guys know I'm a green girl, and I just feel like having a green speedy would just be so so good and that and there's a third one I, I forgot there's a third one and that's just a regular LV print 
LLV canv canvas um, color. So the brown. I just think that that you just like pop pop it popping yourself go about your day it matches all the time like i have a, a you know pair of louis vuitton shoes glasses some bags um i mean sunglasses bags so just having that little speedy i think that would be super super cute so that is on my list uh wish list obviously those are going to be like secondhand or um just like you know vintage or whatever i don't really want to get you know new all right, so this next bag is um, something that I saw come down the runway, um, not in person, but you know, on video like most everybody else. Um, and I mean, it was like, and that is um, the Lateco uh, Le bag from Alaya. That bag is so cute. So it's like a squarish kind of bag has such a nice shape, a huge, a, a large arm loop. And again, like that piece, it's something that's chic, but still a statement. And I love that. I love that that bag. It comes in tons of colors. I would just get a black. I seen a black. Like I would wear that to the um to showings. I would wear that like different outfits. I just think it's just such a chic bag. Bag. And in terms of pricing for like leather goods and leather handbags and designer handbags, it's not insanely priced. You know, I mean, it's not a huge bag anyway, so it shouldn't be insanely priced. But it doesn't have a crazy crazy price point. So um love 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 and would like to add that to my collection all right the next bag i've also talked about before but it actually has a different um material that it's made out of and that is the loewe fold bag you guys know i told you that it would be a perfect work bag for me like i like to carry my laptop or even my ipad sometimes um with me and that bag is just great but they made it in this dark blue kind of suede color and a cognac suede color and now i'm like you know what? Make it hard for me to choose. Now, why don't you? At first, I wanted the black with the. There's a. There's a black with a uh, brown triangle. One I can. I'll pop in the picture. And that one I love. And I think it would go so well with my wardrobe. Again, it's one of those things that I could wear with any color, any type of shoe, whatever, and it would go perfectly in my wardrobe. But that blue, that blue suede, it's just. It just in my mind, like it's just. And which is crazy because I'm not even like a blue girl. I'm not even like, I don't, I have a couple of blue things and I showed you guys a few of my blue stuff, but like blue is not the color that I naturally gravitate towards. But man, that was like a pair of jeans or a cute like tuxedo, um, a, a Canadian tuxedo moment. Mm -hmm. That bag is just so, so cute. I love it so much. It just, it just, it's just so chic. So that is on my list now. I don't know which one I would get first. Um, I might try to get the more practical one first. But I also think that maybe getting the impractical one makes makes more sense because um, the practical one might be there for, <laughs> for a while. Um, but yeah, that is on my list. Okay, so the next one is something that I want to get vintage uh, because the retail prices are crazy. Um, all the girls got their, got their Chanel bags. I do not have a Chanel bag. Um, and I would love to add a Chanel bag to my collection. I have Chanel glasses. I have a Chanel wallet. Um, and it would just be really cute, cool to get my first little Chanel bag. And of course, vintage. If I got something, it would probably be a double flap um, in the medium size, not a, a big double flap. And just something that um, is fun. Like, I don't want to get like a plain black double flap. No. I want something fun. I want something cheeky, maybe with some sparkles or color or something. I don't have an exact idea of what I want. I've been searching on Best Year Collective and adding like things to my little wish list when I find that they, I like them. But when the time comes, um, I think for my birthday this year, like we getting a few pieces for for the girl. Like you know, this is a a, a mid like it's not a huge birthday, but it's like a big kind of, it's a bigish like a smallish small bigish kind of birthday I'm turning 35 and i just think that um getting a 
a couple of bags would be a really nice gift for a girl in her mid 30s. God, <laughs> mid 30s. Anyway, I digress. I just, so I would love to add a Chanel bag to that collection. And then finally, speaking of 35, I was recently, you guys should have saw in my um, New Year Fashion Week video that I went to Fashion File for during Fashion Week and the salespeople there were so nefarious at trying to get me to buy a Birkin and they have gotten me just in my mind, in my head, like, girl, they got Birkins in there for like $8,000, which is, again, saying it out of my mouth, I'm like, that's a ridiculous price. It's crazy to be talking about a bag. But Birkins, again, are investment pieces. So if you are that girl and you're in air getting Birkins, they're investment. But also, again, it's something that I can pass down to the next generation when we when that gets here and i just love it i've loved a birkin ever since i saw it in um sex in the city and i of course would love a red birkin like samantha got or well she didn't get lucy lucy Lou got it but that which has just been always on my mind an epson leather or a um pebbled leather birkin in a red color oh so yeah, so now I'm th now that I'm thinking I might like if I get if I do get a speedy it'll probably be green because I do want to save room for that red Birkin. I just think that it's just so 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 chic. It is um, you know people like talk crap about Birkins now like oh, Birkins are not it and like if you got a chance to get a Birkin you would still get a Birkin. Like let's be for real. Let's let's call a spade a spade. Um, and I love what they look like. I think they're I think they're they're a really actually attractive bag and. Um, I would just love a red Birkin 35, I mean, um, 35, yes, and a 35 size. So I actually got to see the sizes in person and realized that when you see them on the online, um, and you're seeing them on people, I, you do not realize what things look like until you see them on people like you. And that's why I do, I'm doing, I love doing YouTube and that's why I love trying on things and stuff like that for people online because I realized as a bigger person girl that backs look different on different people so people are always talking about these Birkin 25s and these Birkin 30s and as a taller person and I say taller because I'm not the, the tallest I'm 5'9 so if you ever if you guys ever see anything on me and I'm mostly legs so I have very long legs um but as a taller person and most of the time I'm wearing heels so I'm like six feet most of the time um as a taller person and a bigger person a Birkin 25 looks tiny. It looks, it's like, a, it's like, it's like this big. It looks small. It's, it's not, it does not, it's not, it's not giving what it looks like on other people. And I realized that it's because most of the people that I'm like following or I see or any, any of the influencers that I like, they are smaller than I am. They are not tall or even thick kind of people. Um, so we need some more curvy girls and some more thick people to like represent for, us so we can know what things look like on us um but I, i'll be that for for you guys i'll be that for you guys it's, um especially my tall girls but even if you're small you can, you can still follow along um but yeah a birkin 35 actually is a great side bag for me it's a it's a great work bag it could fit this lap it could fit this ipad um i think it might be able to fit my macbook air but I think it's a cute bag and it's not heavy at all. Like people, you think it would be like extra heavy cause it's a big, but that leather, the weather, they way that made the way that they made that leather makes it so lightweight and just love it. So it will be on the, it's on the list. And if you see me with my Birkin 35, just mind your business, know I worked my butt off for it. And cause I have some very lofty goals for this year. We're only in the second month of the year, but your girl is cooking up some things for the year so just be happy for me don't stop following me i'm still gonna be relatable um even with my birkin anyway the next and final category on this wish list video is actually clothes and i have to say regarding like designer stuff i'm not huge into designer clothes and that's because again as a curvier girl and as um someone who even just a woman in general who is at the top of like straight sizes um it's hard for me to really invest in 
designer clothes if I know that, you know, I gain five pounds and it's going to be too big. I mean, it's going to be too small. Or I lose five pounds and it's going to be too... Like, it's really mind-boggling around uh, for me to like invest in those kind of things i'd rather invest in a shoe or a bag or whatever accessory because it does not follow your body size but i still got some designer stuff some designer clothes on my wish list um and that is because there are some pieces some statement pieces that you just really want to add just want to have just a, t a tangible thing to look at. You guys know I have my like Gucci blazer in there and there is another company that makes a blazer that I'm just like, I need one and that is McQueen. I want a McQueen suit. I need a McQueen suit. <laughs> they have this uh, Damask, Damask um, printed suit, which has like, not paisley, it's more like, um, I guess the print is called Damask. Like, and it's like these swirly, it's just like this statement blazer. And I think it's so fabulous. The suit is a lot because it's a lot of print and I'm not usually like a huge print girl. Um, but that, for whatever reason, that suit all just speaks to me. And there's also one that has this red, it's a black blazer with this red painted streak and goes down to the arm. And the arm has like this little dangly piece i think that that's from last season i saw it and i was just like i'm gonna show you a picture but i cannot i have not been able to find it online so and maybe i haven't tried it hard enough but anyway that those two suits are staying rent free in my brain and i would love to add them to my collection um if i had my way and i had more disposable income i would be a mcqueen girl i feel like he, um sarah burton from mcqueen i don't know what this new director is doing just yet um we'll see actually in a couple in a week or so because uh, i think the first queen show it did it happen already it might have happened i don't know but i didn't see it yet anyway um sarah Britton from queen was just like besides uh, alexander mcqueen himself <sighs> just so so good so so good so I just definitely want to add a McQueen suit piece, something in my into my wardrobe. I just think it would be fit really, really great. And there are things that I can wear to work and just feel chic and boss and just fabulous. Uh, the next on my list is actually again from one of my favorite brands. I didn't mention them too too much this time, only only for one of the punt sunglasses, and that's Loewe. You guys know I'm, I'm a Loewe girl, and they have these applique jeans that, of course, a few people have worn. Uh, you guys see them. Um, the influencers are are influencing on this one, but I love them. I love what the Loewe. Um, why can't I think? I love what the Loewe uh, insignia looks like. I love what it looks like. I just think it's like a piece of art. And to have that pa those patches on the knees of a, of a pair of jeans, I think it's so fabulous. And then they came out with a leather pair. And I'm like, why are you doing this to me? But the price really was just like, okay, well, they're not doing it to you because that's crazy. Almost $5,000 for those pants. But the jeans are, you know, fairly affordable. I, I'm Not fairly. They're not affordable. Don't, when I say affordable, I'm speaking relative to something else. And relative to almost $5,000 for the for the leather ones, the jeans are fairly affordable. They're fairly affordable, but I would love to add them to my collection. Um, I would try to get them a, one size like bigger than I am. Again, just because fluctuation, weight, the, you know, things happen. So when you invest in like the designer stuff, you want to make sure that they're going to fit you for a while. So that's my idea. Like I'll probably get like a 14 in those um, so that they can, they can fit. And I think that's the largest size. That's the thing about these designer um, clothes. It's literally like I'm the second or the largest size in most of them so it's like you get your size and like you better stay you better stay that size or you better go get smaller because it's not gonna fit um and that's why i'm not super uh invested in um designer clothes maybe contemporary stuff i do like a lot of contemporary brands um and again it's not as huge of an investment but but yeah when you're paying 900 dollars for a jean, for a pair of jeans you want some things to fit like my um Miso Margiela jeans are actually a size 10, 
which I, in hindsight, I probably could have went up to a 12, um, but I love them things, and I wear them to the ground, and even though I paid $600 for them, they, they're getting, I'm getting my money's worth, so I'm happy, I'm happy about those. Um, and then the next and last piece on my ward, my list, again, is something, and this, and um, both the last thing and these pair of jeans, their jeans, um, fit a gap in my wardrobe. I looked through my wardrobe and realized that though I love to wear pants, I don't have a large variety of pants that one are winter friendly, two that are not cropped like capri work style pants. Um, I'm like, who are you? Like, you don't wear like fun pants. Like, all your pants are just like put on a blazer and you have to go to work with? No, I, I need, no. So these pair of jeans from J.W. Anderson are called the Blue Twisted Jeans and I love them. Again, they are a chic pair of clo uh, clothing, a chic pair of jeans with a twist. And then that is really what sums up my style. I like to be chic and I like a little statement -y. And these jeans give me that with that little insignia on the side, the stitching. I think it's just a fun, fun pair of pants. And I'm excited um, to try to get a pair. And one thing, actually, and I just thought about this in the Loewe ones too. One thing um, you guys could try if you were my size or bigger or... Um, yeah, if my size are bigger, or even if you're a little smaller than I am. Again, a size 10, 8 sometimes, like you cannot even find your size. Look in the men's section, because the Loewe applique um, jeans also come in men. So I might even try that and maybe get them tailored, because men's jeans are always so big in the waist. Um, but get them tailored in the waist. That's also um, something that can do, I can do with the J.W. Anderson jeans too, because they come in men as well. So there's an option. There's an option for us. Where there's a will, there's a way. So that is my wish list for 2024, spring 2024 wish list. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what piece you were excited for me to, to see on me or even a piece that you're excited to get for yourself if you are interested. And again, if you enjoyed this, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.